Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be getting your first result in the arch, arch workbench. Um, I'm going to show you how I did this like super simple uh, sort of house model and I'm going to show you how I created the walls and how I added the windows um, and try to give you an approach that uh, works fairly intuitively. Uh, I, you know, um, The arch module in the past was uh, a lot more difficult to work with. It's gotten much better um, and it's pretty cool. And um, but there's some basic things that if you if you know ahead of time you're going to be a lot less frustrated and, uh, and a lot less confused as to what is actually is happening. So I'm going to try to walk through that. So this is a getting result, getting a result, getting your first result video. So um, you know I'm not an architect, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a builder, uh, but I just I like to learn how to get results from software, <laughs> and I have a, um, a a fixation, if you will, on have, modeling my house in FreeCAD. This is not my house, but uh, I just I want to have a model of my house for some odd reason. I don't know why. But anyway, let's get started and we'll look at how to do this. Uh, the Arch Workbench includes tools from Draft, so we'll be doing our wiring with Draft. Now you can use sketches for these as well, but we'll just do it with Draft for today. Um, so let's get started by doing a new document. But actually, before I get started, I want to encourage you to head on over to Patreon and think about donating to uh, Yorick Van Haver. He's the guy who, uh, hit, hit the arch workbench is, is his thing, uh, among also with a lot of the draft, I guess, I think, um, and, and a lot. He, he contributes a lot to FreeCAD, so we should make sure he gets paid. So I'm gonna start out with a polyline, and you know one of the things about the draft workbench is that, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the arch workbench, and especially the wall, is um, it's not round trip yet, um, so that when you create the wall, it's, it's sort of a one and done. You can, you can modify, uh, like I think I can modify this, the line that I have, but I can't add or subtract lines. So, and we'll, we'll check that out real quick. So um, I'm gonna be starting with that rectangular, or that shape, sorry. And um, uh, Arch doesn't wanna face, so we've gotta turn the face to false to turn that off. It needs just the wire. So all you have to do to get your wall is select the wire and click wall. Now you'll notice this might look differently than yours um, if you haven't changed the settings. So I did change some settings for this to work in imperial mode or <laughs> for, for us imperial measure users. Um, and where I did that was in the arch workbench, you can go into defaults and I've set the walls to be three and a half inches uh, uh, thick and eight feet tall. And then I've set windows, the windows to be three feet by three feet and three and a half inches. So, um, you know, not any standard window, just one that kind of looks good on, on in drawing. So, you know, make sure you take your time to set those. And then in draft mode, um, you can set the text dimensions here. Uh, so this is for, for um, if you're doing measurements, uh, you know, you want to set that here. And what I'll try to do is uh, make a document with a link to it that shows um, all my default settings. So that's our wall, and now I'm just gonna add a door. Uh, let's add a window to this end first. So to add a window, I've selected that face, and I wanna set my working plane to that face. And um, I didn't cover it when I did the, the wires, but let me talk about it here. So to set a working plane to a face, you click the face, and then you click the working plane tool, and you see that it automatically sets it, the working plane to that face. Two things that you need, though, are the, the, uh, the tool, the, uh, the grid needs to be on or it doesn't set so let me show you that so if it's if I do this and click it it doesn't it's not going to change it but if it's but if it's on and I click it it changes it so the grid has to be on for the for the working face to get changed and then also if you don't have a face selected you can select you know one of the standard um, one of the standard working planes one of the predefined working planes so but we'll do it with this one and uh, let's see, something else to keep in mind is, so let's just go ahead and do our window. So let me pick window. And I wanna show you the preset. So if we go down here to uh, preset, I'm gonna pick a sash window, a two pane sash. So you see it, it floats nice on the plane. Otherwise it does that sort of thing. See how it looks like it's on that plane, but it's in front of it. And so you might get a weird result. Um, but you'll notice I don't get a snap to my grid. And it's because I get a snap to grid out here. You can see it's snapping. See, it's showing the grid snap here. 
but I think the grid is beneath the plane of this. I uh, don't know why that is. So I just kind of pick, I'm just picking a random place and then I'll move it, move it specifically in the next step. So in the next step, I'm gonna turn the grid off and I just want this centered with this line and I'll center it with this line here. Um, and that'll, you know, that's just, just to get it into position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the window. So I'm gonna select it. Now that would work as selecting it, but I'm gonna select it more specifically. And we're gonna use the draft move. And I'm gonna make sure I have the center line, uh, the midpoint snap on. And I'm gonna grab the midpoint of the window. And then I'm gonna snap it with just, I think it's gonna be Y. Nope, it's gonna be X, yep. And I'm gonna snap it to the middle of that line. So you see when I move down, uh, it snapped. I have the, uh, the, the plane, working plane snap on, so it's gonna stay in that working plane. So let's do that again for the side. So I have the window selected. I'm gonna select the midpoint of that line and I'm gonna do Y, yep, so Y. So now it'll only move in the Y direction because I hit the Y key and it's only moving on that plane. So even if I go way over here with my cursor, it stays on that plane in the Y. And I'm gonna select the midpoint of that. So now the window's uh, centered. So that's, that's good enough for today. Now I'm gonna add a door here. So I select the plane, let's turn our grid on and we'll do the working plane again. And you'll see it snaps to the working plane changes to that grid. So to add a door, it's the window tool. So it's more like an opening tool. So I'm gonna pick door here, simple door, and we'll just put it, uh, so what I'd like to do is put it on the bottom. So, all right, I did, get a, I did get a midpoint snap. So the line snaps go through, but the grid don't. So I'll do a midpoint snap there and we'll drop our door in. Now that door is too small. So we'll select door and we'll go to three inch, uh, three feet, uh, thickness is fine. Uh, thickness is fine, but we want or three foot width is fine, but we want six foot eight inches tall. And for some reason, it always does. It does it to me every time. Um, it doesn't accept the inches. So let me try it again. So six feet eight inches. There we go. It's a, uh, for some reason the first time I do the door, it adds those two up as feet. Um, I'll have to try it again. I have one more door, so we'll try it again and see if it if it repeats that behavior, and then we'll report that. So I'm gonna center this guy as well. So uh, let's see, did I have it selected? Yes, I had it selected. And I'm gonna pick the midpoint of this line. And you'll see because I'm, I'm locked to the plane, see how the point is slightly in front of the door? So it's selecting it, but on the plane. So I can only move in on the plane, and I wanna do an X, so I'm hitting X and I'm gonna pick the midpoint of that line. So I just had to hover over that line to get the midpoint. Try it again, yep. Yeah, so now that door is in the middle point, and that's good. And let, let's add our four windows on the front. So I'm gonna do the working plane tool again, bring it over, and I'm gonna add a window. Where is she? There it is. So window, and we're gonna do the sash again. Now you cannot copy, uh, you can't copy these. Um, it doesn't, uh, it copies the window, but you don't get a cutout. So you have to use the tool to get the cutout. Uh, as far as I know, there may be, there may be more to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this one to the center here and I'm just going to leave it. Let's, well, let's, yeah, let's do that. And then I can align, align the rest of them as I go. So I'm going to pick move and we'll just center it up. Let's, so it's going to be with Y again and we'll pick it there. So the next one's gonna go right next to it. So we'll do another window and a sash to paint. So one thing you're, you, hopefully you're seeing is that, so this is the endpoint snap tool, is that those draft snap tools are important to learn. And I think that's part of why I couldn't use it before is I didn't, I didn't know the draft snap well enough. So as soon as I learned the draft workbench, I was able to work with this a lot more. So let's, let me just stick this up here arbitrarily to show you uh, wrong window, but that's okay, we'll leave it. Um, so I'm gonna pick this, the, I'm gonna pick the corner of it. So now I can move it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna restrict it by hitting the Y key. So it's restricted in the Y axis, but I can select this as the end point. So now they're aligned, aligned below. So what it did was it moved it only in the Y direction down to this spot. Um, so that the, the axis restrictions are really important. Let me do another one. So I'm gonna, I want this one to be right on that corner. So 
I can just hover over that line and get that corner. So now it snaps to the corner there and we get our second window. So, um, so I suggest, I really suggest learning the draft tools well, the draft and the uh, snapping tools. Um, I use the endpoint snap and the midpoint snap a lot and then the center snap a lot. And of course, uh, snap to the working plane is almost always on. So I wanna have an interior wall here. So let's go on the top and um, I'm gonna turn off and, oh, we wanna set our working plane to the top and I'm gonna turn off the wall so I can just see this wire because I wanna add a wire here. So when I add a wire here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go from the endpoints and you might think that that should be um, automatically added to the wall, but it will not be. But you'll notice, I, you'll see I have a trouble. Well, it's not, it's a midpoint. I, I've got no snap there, can't snap to the end, but I can snap, but I can select um, Y as my axes again and then snap there. And now your line is right to that wall. So again, that snap is super important. So with that wire selected, I'm gonna add a, add a wall. Oops, wrong wire. Let's do that again. So with this wire selected, so you see it's a line this time. So a line is a, a wire with additional uh, data, uh, with additional properties. So uh, we hit wall and let's show this wall. So now I have an interior wall. So let's add a door to that interior wall. I'm gonna select the plane and I'm going to set that as my working plane and we're gonna add a door. So it's gonna be a window. <laughs> and again, I'll put that in the midpoint again. And oops, I didn't even select door. Let's try it again. All right, actually, I'm really glad that happened. So you see how it leaves this open space here? That's not really there. <laughs> so when we add a door again, when we add the correct one, it will get rid of that because um, we're gonna, we'll do a simple door and I'm gonna make it easier to snap to it a little bit and we'll make the door actually. So if I had put that somewhere else, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, let me put it somewhere else so you can see. So let's put it next to it. I'll put it right, put right here and then we'll have to. All right, one more time. So let's get rid of the window and we'll try a door and we'll do simple door. And now we'll put that one here. All right, so now, now that I have my simple door in the second wall, you'll see that opening moved. So it's kind of like there's a recalc that's waiting to happen, but there's no recalc uh, symbol showing. Um, so I don't know if it's technically a, um, a recalc, but, uh, but you know, that's basically what's happening there. So I'm gonna make this six feet, and let's see if we can get that little bug. So six feet, eight inches, and that is in fact, just for, oh, it worked that time. <laughs> I was gonna zoom up on it, but it worked. Okay, so I might be typing feet feet and not inches. So, all right, so that's our first level. Now let's add the roof. So to add the roof, I'm gonna hide, um, I'm gonna hide the walls and we're just gonna see this wire. I'm gonna set the working plane to top. And all right, actually I missed a step there. Let's go to the wall. I'm gonna set the working plane to the top edge of this wall. So now you see our grid is at the top edge of, of the wall. Now I'm gonna hide the wall. And although it looks like the grid is not on the top edge, it is, so you can see it by that. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna do it twice, so I apologize. I'm gonna do it clockwise first. So if you see, I, I put my line tool on the edge, it looks like it's not, the uh, dot's not on the edge, but you know, it's directly above it on the working plane. So it's snapping to the it's snapping to the edge of the line. Now I can't get it. That's funny. It's snapping to the edge of the line and to the um, and to the working plane. So we can just go all the way around. Oops. Uh, try that again. Let's start from the beginning. So we can go all the way around and uh, and create a line using this line, but it's eight feet above it. And we go all the way to here, here. So this is our clockwise version of the line and I hope it does it incorrectly so I can show you. So again, we need to change this to not closed or no, no, no face, I'm sorry. So no face <clears throat> and let's make our roof. Yeah, good, so it worked. So you see this roof is angled in. 
which is not what I want for a house. I'm not going to have that kind of, I'm not going to have an industrial roof. So, um, the, and I tried to do a reverse and let, I'll show you what happens when it reverses. Let's see. Sorry, this is, this is kind of going slow, I guess. So I want roof and let's see, where's the reverse? Placement, uh, oh, flip. So if you hit flip, so if you're not planning for that, you see it just flips it and it uh, embeds it in the wall. So that doesn't do me any good. So we'll just, we'll hide that roof for now and we'll do another line. So that one, I drew the line <clears throat> uh, clockwise. So if we do it anti-clockwise, it draws the roof correctly. So let's try it again, but we'll do it anti-clockwise this time. So we'll do the same thing. Now you could also just um, you could also just copy this the wire and move it up, uh, which is also a good easy way to do it. So we have our our wire here, and we're going to get rid of the face, make face false, and pick our pick our wire and add our roof. And you can see now it's oriented the way that I I would want it. Now it's so you know this is not a full roof like you would want in uh, in a regular, you know, we, we, it's not all the way up to the peak. So in this case, it's just a representative roof. Uh, but I think it works to, to get a basic model until this, and I don't know if architectural roofs ever do show the whole thing. I would guess they do. But I think this architectural workbench is, is mostly for industrial. So at any rate, I hope this helps you get started with the arch workbench, and I hope, um, I hope I showed you a few tricks along the way. Thanks and have a great day.